Hey Food 52ers, today we are making basil, a basil dish that is poached peaches mm -hmm. with a basil syrup, which Meryl has made in Maine and now in Brooklyn once and now in Brooklyn twice. Twice, yeah. So she's now an expert on this dish. And it's by the Runaway Spoon. Yeah, yeah. So you want to take the lead? Sure, why not? So it, it's really beautifully simple. We've got some white wine here sweating away. <laughs> We're just using a Tuscan white, but actually I used a Gruner Veltliner over the weekend and that was really good. So mm -hmm. you might want to think about like. that. Yeah. Uh, just some water. I think a Riesling would be good too. Oh yeah. yeah, I agree. Something, yeah, sort of floral and fruity. And then a, a whole bunch of sugar. And you just bring that up to a simmer and you're gonna let it bubble for about five minutes before you add the peaches. Up. There Ow. We go. Ooh. You okay? Careful, careful with peach pits. Yeah. All right. I am losing do you guys the battle. The, do you guys know <laughs> this knife? <laughs> do you? Do you know this, <laughs> this, this particular one? Um, it's called a bird's beak knife because it looks like a bird's beak. Um, anyway, Meryl and I find it quite handy for taking out peach pits and, um, you know, peeling things, um, just general Goodness. Yes, general goodness, yeah. It's also called a turning knife, which oh, is yes. how I first learned to use it in cooking school. Right. You had, we had to turn vegetables, which basically means carving them into these like barrel shapes, or for a mushroom, you carve it's it. It's really stupid. <laughs> it is, and it's, there's a lot of waste, which of course they used to make stock, so that's okay. I'm gonna put the basil leaves in. Just a big old stem, a couple stems. It's gonna go like that. Okay. We may not be able to fit all these in in one go. Yep. I'm gonna go for the good ones. I'm gonna turn the heat down a tiny bit because we want them to poach kind of gently. And these do not take long. It depends obviously on how ripe they are and they should be you know, ripe without being totally soft. Yeah, if they're totally soft, they're gonna like, you're gonna have issues. Yeah, but you, don't, you do not want hard peaches either. So you basically poach them just for a few minutes on each side. <laughs> and as you can see, look, the syrup is already turning pink. This is like, one of our favorite things about this recipe. You yeah. end up with this beautiful pink syrup from the skins of the peaches. So we're just gonna let that bubble away. So we're just gonna gently flip these over. So, oh look, it's so funny, you can see it's like yeah. cooked there, not, <laughs> not at the top. So we wanna loosen the skin. And you just have, you have to cook them according to their ripeness. Like it might mm -hmm. take them a few minutes, it might take them many minutes. Yesterday <laughs> these took like way longer. Yeah. And you just want to, the way to test them is to just um, pierce them very gently with a very sharp knife just to see if they're tender. Mm -hmm. So the peaches have gotten all nicely tenderized. See how it, like, it wrinkles like elephant skin? Ooh, good metaphor. Thank you. Simile. <laughs> uh, that means they're ready because the skins will come off. Wait, oh, actually, that one's already one, coming off. It's hilarious. Okay. Um, and as we learned yesterday, you don't want to let them cool totally before peeling them because um, the sugar actually kind of like reseals the skins onto the uh, onto the peach. So you yeah. want to wait until they're just cool enough to touch and then slip them off like you would a tomato skin. Well, it looks like a lot of these are just coming off by themselves, which yes, is nice. They are. <laughs> Doing our work for us. Okay, great. So now I think we're going to throw in the rest of the basil and. Turn the heat up a little so that we can reduce this syrup. Okay, great. Oh, well, that one's already actually, done. This one's already done. Oh my God, that's beautiful. The colors, it, it, they really come out and the skin comes off. Yeah. I'm just gonna put this right here. This one's done too. Since that one's so pretty. Oh, this is great. They're coming off so nicely. So I'm just gonna, I just push the basil aside. We're supposed to just sort of really take it out, but yeah, scoop up some of the syrup, which we reduced, you know, a fair amount, but it's still fairly liquidy. You don't want it too sticky. And then you just drizzle it over. And actually, if it weren't 11 a.m., I would suggest we eat this with vanilla ice cream. Or your favorite ricotta. Ricotta, mm. yeah. Something yeah. to cut. I mean, they're sweet. They're not unbearably sweet, but something to cut the sweetness. And then you could take, um, like, uh, 
little almond like macarons and crumble Ooh, them on top. Oh, that's a great idea. Or um, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm, -hmm. mm. Oh, they're really good. Oh, the other thing too, you have all this gorgeous pink infused syrup left over, which is essentially like having a bonus recipe mm -hmm. because you can just put it, mix it with sparkling water or with Ooh. a little Prosecco or yeah. even a little white wine. Yeah. Really, yeah. They're lot, or just pour it over ice cream. Or it's got infinite uses. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Runaway Spoon, for such a great recipe. Mm -hmm. Thank you.